Hey ladies and gentlemen, Steven here from the channel Redolescence and I want to thank you all for tuning into my channel and watching my videos. It really does mean a lot to me. And in today's episode, I'm very excited to be giving you my close take on a release by the company Jean-Paul Gaultier and this one is called Scandal, so stay tuned. This fragrance was released in June of 2017 and the perfumer behind this composition is Daphne Bugie. Now Daphne Bugie has quite the extensive resume online, you can certainly look it up. Very impressive creations including Aura by Mugler among others. Now this fragrance is inspired by Madame la Ministre and Madame la Ministre is a government uh, minister and she goes out at night and parties in a small neighborhood in Paris and then goes straight to her office to continue her work. So this is supposed to have a night out playful vibe, but it's also supposed to be dressed up and sophisticated. So it's interesting to have that dichotomy between the two. I'm excited to tell you what I think of the smell of this fragrance, but let's start things off with the presentation. So I think the presentation for this one is really nice. Uh, you have this cylindrical tin, which is typical of Jean-Paul Gaultier fragrances, just a scandal on the front. And then here you have the bottle, which is a bust of women's legs at the top wearing high heels. You have a plate on the front just says Scandal. And if you are looking for the serial number so that you can authenticate your product, it is located on the bottom. It's laser etched in there. The cap does click into place. You have Jean-Paul Gaultier engraved into the atomizer. And the distribution on the atomizer is very nice. Let's go ahead and continue with the smell. Now, as soon as you spray this fragrance on, you are going to get that sensual vibe that I was talking about before. And it does come across just a tad bit sweet, but I can't go as far as saying that it smells as sweet as other designer fragrances like Pink Sugar by Aqualina. It's definitely a bit more formal than that. Some people online have compared it to La Viette Belle, which I think is a fragrance that borrows influences from a lot of other fragrances. Some people have even compared it to Head Over Heels, which I don't quite get, at least not in the opening. Once it dries down and it establishes a bit of uniformity with the greener elements like the patchouli and some woods, I could possibly see that. But it has a few sweet elements in the beginning. It has like this licorice note. It also has peach, with which I definitely think puts it into feminine territory. But it also has a whisper of white florals. It has gardenia and jasmine, the former of which is a fantasy note. But it also has that peach which really grounds it and makes it feminine and also gives it this youthful vibe about it. I think the florals contribute largely to the fact that this comes across kind of formal and elegant but it also has that youthful appeal about it that I really like. I don't find this one to be overly sweet but I don't find it to be overly sophisticated but I do find this one to be feminine. Um, overall, I really do enjoy this scent. I think it's very easy to wear. I think it's very sort of scandalous, uh, pardon the pun, and voluptuous. It really is a nice scent, and I can see a variety of different women wearing this one from the, uh, you know, sophisticated sort of working women who go out there and they get the job done to the ones that are a bit more casual and laid back and they like to go out and party and have a good time. So I think this one is pretty versatile in that regard. My wife likes this one as well. So we went vacationing during spring break. We went on a cruise ship and I saw that they were selling this one on the cruise ship and uh, my wife really liked this one and I wanted to purchase it simply for the fact that I wanted to get this information out there to my subscribers. But as it turned out, my wife really enjoyed it as well. So I'm happy that I've had this opportunity. Let's go ahead and finish things up with my overall assessment. So in terms of its uniqueness and its overall smell, I do think it's a unique fragrance because it has some unfamiliar elements or some elements that are scarcely used in fragrances today, like licorice, which I know Lolita Lampica is notorious for using. But other than that, I think it is a new scent. And although it might borrow elements from other fragrances, it is its own release. So I definitely admire it for that. Longevity on this one is pretty good. It's eau de parfum concentration. I got about seven hours with it. Projection was great for the first hour and a half to two hours. I want to say at like the five or six hour mark, it became a skin scent. And then you really have to bury your nose into your hand or wherever you applied it in order to be able to smell it. Versatility on this one is excellent. I don't think it's so loud that you can't wear it in the summer. And I don't think the, you know, the composition is so dense that you would wear it exclusively in the winter. Like I said, it does have those white florals, which really just allow the fragrance to open up and it makes it diffusive and more ethereal. 
I think anybody of any age can wear this one. I do think it leans feminine though, so the guys, the macho guys out there, you probably want to avoid this one. And as far as the presentation goes, it has a sculpture of this bust of female legs. I think it looks quite nice. I think it's a cool presentation. Some might call it kitschy, but it's these fragrances that really, you know, gain the notoriety as it were, and you can uh, recognize them on a shelf a mile away decades from now. So I quite like the presentation. And if I were to give this one a final verdict, I would say I really enjoy the scent. I don't love it because I'm personally not a fan of florals and I don't like peach. I like the taste of peach and I like apricot and fruits within that realm. But um, whenever I do smell it, it just comes across as a typical fruity floral fragrance and I think that that makes it kind of conventional but nonetheless I think it is a wonderful scent. I love smelling this one on my wife and uh, I, would I wear it personally? I don't think so. It just comes across a little bit too feminine to me but it is a job well done. It's an interesting scent and it's pretty much what you would expect to smell from the house of Jean-Paul Gaultier. There are no bad scents out of that house whether we're talking about the women's releases like Classique or the men's releases like Le Mall or Ultra Mall or Fleur du Mall. I really do enjoy everything that the house of Jean-Paul Gaultier has put out. But at the end of the day, it's just a fragrance that is not for me. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. That was my review of Scandal by Jean-Paul Gaultier, a wonderful scent. I'm going to leave the links down below if you are interested in checking it out. For the ladies out there, if you want a Swiss Army knife of a fragrance, this is it. Look no further. So if you own or have tried this fragrance, I would love to hear what you think. Leave a comment down below. Also, please don't forget to subscribe for future videos. And please remember to enable notifications by clicking on the bell next to the subscribe button. This way, whenever I do put out a new video, it will get delivered straight to your feed and you never need to worry about missing any content. Thanks again for watching. I love you guys and we'll see you in the next review. Take care.